everyone welcome to another class of statistics for engineers 2 so in this video we're going to talk about chi-square and the um, application of it so how do we apply this to problems in research or feasibility studies okay so what is chi-square? So chi-square statistic is a test that measures how expectations compare to actual observed data or model results. So the data used in calculating chi-square statistic must be random, raw, mutually exclusive, drawn from independent variables, and drawn from a large enough samples. Relating to or denoting a statistical method assessing the good fit between observed values and expected theoretical values. So when it is particularly useful, so when do we know if we have to use chi-square? So it is useful in tests involving cases where persons, event, or objects are grouped into two or more nominal categories, such as yes or no, class A, B, C, D. So if we have four categories, we can use chi-square or if we have approved, undecided, or disapproved. So it is most useful when analyzing cross-tabulation of survey response data. So we have here a chi-square table of distribution. So this is the probability of exceeding the critical value. So this 0 0.05, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001 here are the level of significance, the alpha, and D is the degree of freedom. So we're going to solve this um, later okay, for the degree of freedom. And then we will refer to this chi-square table of distribution. Okay, So this table is very important. And it is searchable in the internet. And it's not only 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.001. So you can also have other levels of significance like 0 0.10, 0. Um, 0, 0, 005 okay so we have um several level of significance and also the degree of freedom is not limited to 10 so it can go up to 100 uh, 100 1000 okay so the bigger the the values of your samples of course the bigger also the degree of freedom then, this chi-square distribution is an asymmetric distribution that has a minimum value of 0, okay, but no maximum values. The curve reaches a peak to the right of 0 and then gradually declines in height, so the larger the chi-square value is. Then, the curve approaches but never quite touches the horizontal axis. So, in this part, we have here 1 minus alpha. Our alpha here is the level of significance, and this is the region of non-rejection. So, if our chi-square value um, is here, so we will not reject the null hypothesis. But if our chi-square value is here in the region of rejection so we will reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis okay so we have a chi-square test goodness of fit test so we, example researchers have conducted a survey of 1600 coffee drinkers asking how much coffee they drink in order to confirm previous studies. So, previous studies have indicated that 72% of Americans drink coffee. The results of previous studies, so this is the result of previous study, this one, and the survey at the right is here. So, this is the result of the survey. So, at alpha or at the level of significance equal to 0 0.05, is there enough evidence to conclude that the distributions are the same? Okay, so we have here the data. So, first thing that we need to do is to set the null and alternative hypothesis. So, our null hypothesis here is 
the population frequencies are equal to the expected frequency. Okay, so that will be calculated later. Then our alternative hypothesis, of course, the null hypothesis is false. So just contradicting the null hypothesis. Our given alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Now, to compute for the degrees of freedom, that is just k minus 1. Our k is the number of samples. So, k minus 1, that is equal to 4, minus 1 equal to 3. Then, we have alpha equal to 0 0.05. And uh, degree of freedom as what we have calculated, that's equal to 3. Therefore, our chi-square critical value is equal to 7.815. Okay, so let's take note this value because we're going to use that um, later. Okay, so based from the table of chi-square distribution, our critical value, we have, new, uh, we have noted it here, that is 7.815. Now let's go back to our given data. So we have here um, two cups per week. 1 cup per week, 1 cup per day, and 2 plus cups per day, and the percentage of coffee drinkers. So for our expected value, the letter E, we just only need to multiply the percentage to the number of uh, respondents, that is 1,600. So we have 0 0.15 times 1,600, we have 240. 0 0.13 times 1,6, 208. Then 0 0.27 times 1,600, that is 432. And 0 0.45 times 1,600, that is 720. Now, for the observed um, value, that is from the survey. Okay, so this one, so let's just put it here. So 206, 193, 462, and 739. Then let us subtract O minus E. Okay, so 206 minus 240, we have negative 34. 193 minus 208, negative 15. 462 minus 432, 30. And 739 minus 720, that is 19. Then let us square the O minus E. So we'll have these values. Okay, you can also check if the values that I got is correct. And then for the last... Well, a last column, we have to divide the O minus E squared to the E. Okay, so this one. So that is 1156 divided by 240. We have 4.817. 225 divided by 208, 1.082. 900 divided by 432, 2.083. And 361 divided by 720, that's 0 0.5014. Then, to solve for our chi-square, that's equal to the summation of observed minus expected squared over expected. So we have to get the summation of this one. Okay, so our chi-square is equal to 8.483. So, is there enough evidence to reject our null hypothesis? So, since our chi-square is equal to 8.483 and it is greater than 7.815 the critical value from the chi-square distribution table there is enough statistical evidence to reject the null hypothesis and to believe that the old percentages no longer hold okay so since our value of chi-square is greater than 7.815 it falls under the rejection uh, region. Okay? So that's why we will reject the null hypothesis. So next we have chi-square test, test for independence. So a chi-square independence test is used to test whether or not two variables are independent. So the procedure for the hypothesis test is essentially the same. The differences are that each O is that the two variables are independent. Each sub A is that the two variables are not independent, so they are dependent. The expected frequency, ERC, for the, for the entry in row 
R and column C is calculated using this formula. So, ERC is equal to the sum of row R multiplied by the sum of column C all over the sample size. And the degrees of freedom is calculated by the number of rows minus 1 times the number of columns minus 1. Now, let's have an example. So, the results of a random sample of children with pain from musculoskeletal injuries treated with acetaminophen, ibuprofen, or ecodane are shown in the table. So, at alpha is equal to 0 0.10, is there enough evidence to conclude that the treatment and result are independent? So, we have here the table. Okay, so for the this one we have significant improvement and slight improvement then we have here the treatments the acetaminophen ibuprofen and the codeine then we have tallied the row equal to 200 then this one equal to 100 then every column we have also get the sum so that's 100 and total is 300 so first we have to perform the hypothesis test. So our null hypothesis, HO, is equal to the treatment and response are independent. Then the alternative hypothesis is that HA, the treatment and response, are dependent. So our given alpha or level of significance equal to 0 0.10, the degrees of freedom is calculated by the number of rows minus 1 multiplied by the number of columns minus 1. So that is 2 minus 1 times 3 minus 1, that is 1 times 2 equal to 2. So we have here based from table of chi-square distribution, so this one is 0 0.10. And 2, so we have 4.605. Now let's go back to our data and complete this table here. So we have row 1, that's 200, and column 1, that's 100. So we have 200 times 100 divided by the total, which is 300. So we have 66.7. Then row 1. Okay, 200 and column number 2, that is the same. So, 100 of 66.7. Then, row 1 and column 3, that is 200 and 100. Again, we have 66.7. Then, for row number 2, okay, second row and column number 1, that is 100 and 100. So, we have 100 times 100 divided by 300, that is 33.3. .3. Then, second row and second column. So, the same and also the second column and a second row and third column. That is 33.3. .3. Now, for the observed values, of course, that is the this one. So, we have row 1, column 1, 58. Row 1, column 2, 81. And row 1, column 3, that is 61. And for row 2, column 1, 42, 19, and 39. Then let us subtract the observed to the expected. Oh, observed minus expected, I mean. So we have 58, 9 is 66.7. We have negative 8.7, 81 minus 66.7, 14.3, 61 minus 66.7. We have negative 5.7. Then, 42 minus 33.3, 3, uh, 8.7. Then, 19 minus 33.3, we have negative 14.3. And last, 39 minus 33.3, 3, we have 5.7. Then, squaring this column, okay, so we'll have 75.69, 204.49. Negative 5.7 squared is 32.49. 8.7 squared is 75.69 then same as the above yeah. then let's divide this column with the expected value so you have 75.69 divided by 66.7 we have 1.135 
204.49 divided by 66.7, we have 3.067. Then, 32.49 divided by 66.7, we have 0 0.487. 75.69 divided by 33.3, we have 2.271. 204.49 divided by 33.3, we have 6.135. And lastly, we have 32.49 divided by 33.3 is 0 0.975. So, to solve for the chi-square, so just... Um, have the summation of this one. So, summation of observed minus expected square divided by the expected, that is equal to 14.07. So, is there enough evidence to reject our HO or our null hypothesis? So, since the chi square that we have solved is equal to 14.07 and it is greater than 4.605, the one that we got from the chi square distribution table. So, there is enough statistical evidence to reject the null hypothesis because our chi square is greater than the critical value. So, we can have the belief that there is a relationship between the treatment and the response because our alternative hypothesis is that the two, the treatment and the response are dependent with each other. So, there is a relationship between the two. And so, that is the end of our discussion about the chi-square test.